Welcome to Dhaka Tribune Presents Straight Talk, one-on-one -on -one conversation with newsmakers and opinion shapers. I am Zafar Subhan, editor of Dhaka Tribune. Today, my guest is Mr. Abul Hassan Chaudhry. Mr. Chaudhry is an eminent figure in Bangladeshi politics who served as a member of parliament for two terms and is the state minister for foreign affairs from 1996 to 2001. When it comes to Bangladesh's foreign affairs, there are few who can match him for insight. And we are here today to discuss the changing geopolitical world and in, in the implications for us here in Bangladesh. Welcome to the show, Mr. Abul Hassan Chaudhry. Well, uh, let's get right into it. The world. Uh, Kaiser is changing. What do you see as the biggest challenges that Bangladesh will face? Straight away, the problem that we face today, mm -hmm. the country faces, is of course the Rohingya issue. That's right. Is the humanitarian it's the crisis humanitarian of our times. aspect? And, Absolutely. Uh, this also has also uh, greatly demonstrated our inner strength. That uh, whilst we are characterized as uh, being very divisive on most issues, one thing has been very clearly brought out that in enunciating this policy, yes, and I'm not necessarily talking about the way that the Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has referred to this issue uh, over and over again, which he has done in a very uh, robust way. That's right. That whilst this country of uh, 160 million in the most densely populated region, most densely populated country in the world. We cannot afford even a single individual. But Bangladesh is not merely a country. It's a commitment. It's a vision. It's a history. It's a philosophy. Uh, we just can't turn our back. We have been applauded by the world. And the very fact that uh, the country is united is also shows our strength. So this is our overarching problem. Uh, there will always be critics and cynics. Perhaps we would have done one or two things better. But then again, uh, by and large, we have done it well. Now, let us I mean, see I if we can absolutely. unite it. I mean, I think for yes. the, as you have mentioned, the Honorable Prime Minister's words, the position of the Bangladeshi government and indeed the Bangladeshi people is, I think, something we can take great pride in. Absolutely. And what is noteworthy, as you have mentioned, is this has not actually turned into a partisan affair. Mm. I have not noticed that this is something which has divided Bangladeshis, mm. has divided the government from the opposition. And, you know, this is as it should be. This shows, I think, a maturity in a country, mm. which perhaps we didn't have a decade ago or two decades ago, which actually uh, presages good things for the future for Bangladesh. So I think I agree with you. The way we have dealt with things shows a certain maturity, a certain level of um, understanding, which perhaps didn't exist in the past. But of course, the problem still remains. Do you, how, do you, how do you see us addressing that well, in the future? I think the thing to do is to hold this unity. And had it been possible, it's very unfortunate, had there been uh, to bring out the chinks in this policy, then I think this would have been exploited. Yes. But uh, uh, this is overwhelmingly clear that on this issue and the moral aspect uh, is so big, so large that the country is, as you have rightly observed, is united. After all, it was not that long ago mm -hmm. that uh, 10 million of us took refuge in a neighborly country in which your uh, very legendary father, whom we address as Sir Professor Ahmad Subhan, plays such a gallant role all around the world. Uh, espousing even long before that, building, building up the case under the leadership of the greatest Bengali of all time, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, the six-point program. I remember well, um, I had just uh, become 20, you know, I was sort of in my late, twen uh, late teens in London and various places, the meetings that were taking place. So, what else could we do? We were refugees ourselves. So, I hope that the world is, uh, has woken up, the world is with us and to me, it may sound rather base that uh, here is this other uh, uh, women ac across the Naf River who is sitting with the uh, Nobel Peace Laureate, uh, yes, uh, you know, uh, for which we were on the streets, but for which our Prime Minister had applauded her at one time. That's and true. our Prime Minister, who has done so much, mm -hmm. uh, has not yet received the national, international acclamation. And let me spell out very clearly the Nobel Peace Prize, which she so richly deserves on this issue. On the other issue, CHT, 
uh, peace accord which he, which he signed many decades ago when there was a clear more articulated cynicism mm -hmm. in the divisive society that we happen to have. But anyway, let us not dwell on that. Let us hope that in the coming days and months, uh, we shall be able to uh, generate a situation where even the Myanmar people will feel, Myanmar government will feel that there is more to benefit by having a more win-win situation with Bangladesh. After all, that is what is the essence of BIMSTEC. Yes. to get together, to have more trade, more trade facilitation. And, you know, instead of sending so many millions across the river, what is there to get? The other thing, our other great friend China, yes. were focused on Obor, One Man World Road, which Bangladesh enthusiastically support, we support. I personally think it's a great thing. How is that going to be possible when we are going to have this scale of turbulence just a few miles away from where it's all going to be. You're absolutely right. I this think problem China is should one understand which, this. which needs to be solved. Yes. I mean, I personally think that the future of Bangladesh lies more with BIMSTEC rather than SARC. Sure. But as you point out, then that requires mm. that requires some level of understanding mm. and agreement and cooperation between Bangladesh and Myanmar. So the current state of affairs is surely not sustainable. Yes. Yes. It's not good for anyone, mm. you know. Um, but of course, I think part of this is that, you know, um, I went to a uh, talk recently from, given by Raja Mohan, who you may be familiar with, uh, strategic affairs mm. analyst and journalist Indian. And he made the point that, you know, Bangladesh, and I agree with him, Bangladesh is no longer a small country. We need to start thinking of ourselves is a big country. After all, population-wise, what? Seventh, eighth largest country in the world. Mm. The economy is growing it, by leaps and bounds. Within the next couple of decades, I think it'll move up to the 25th largest economy in the world, if I'm not wrong. So, you know, I think we now need to start thinking of ourselves in that way. Uh, would you agree? Absolutely, absolutely. And our neighbors, uh, I would not be a Muslim or a Bengali, if I do not acknowledge uh, the sense of indebtedness to our immediate neighbor India, uh, I have not heard from a single Bengali who traveled across in 1971 who has come back and we remain so. But uh, I must say it is so unnecessary when we heard silly uh, noises coming out from Assam and other places because India must also realize mm. that Bangladesh is a huge country with tremendous potentials of course. and so much economy is there to be made from the Indian side that I think the Indian leader should, should have the vision not to allow this sort of noises coming from India. I mean, absolutely. I mean, this is the thing. You see, a confrontational relationship yes. um, does no one any good. Exactly. In fact, no one, we would all be better off if we could all play together nicely. I mean, I think the challenge that perhaps the Indians face is that there's so many different constituencies within India. But of course, I also agree with you that I think they would be so much better off mm. if they were to able to also look at Bangladesh from a win-win perspective. Yes. And yes. hopefully, you know, I mean, I think, uh, you know, I do see there are many elements within the government who actually see that. I think the challenge they face is that to bring everyone on board and make sure that everyone is reading from the same playbook. Mm. But of course, the other issue with Bangladesh is uh, we stand on the crossroads between India Southeast Asia, and of course China. And I think moving forward, navigating that relationship is going to be what um, is going to be the biggest challenge for us. Exactly. How do you exactly. see that? That is our strength, and this is something that we should also leverage. Yes. Not uh, in a posture of arrogance, mm -hmm. uh, but with friendship. Uh, and certainly, uh, our uh, Prime Minister has given great importance, and rightly, if I may say so, with connectivity and we must uh, you know I have been a great uh, admirer of track 2 because yes. many things cannot be said at an official level absolutely and this must be made very clear and as has been done in the past I am sure it will continue to be done that uh, a lot of things have to be gained and if trade if commerce if industry uh, I mean look if India opens up if only a small percentage of its market to Bangladesh it will make no dent at all to India. All these to, to India, all these artificial non-tariff, para-tariff barriers, talking these things is not taking an anti-Indian posture. Not it at is all. taking in effect a friendly posture. I agree. Because if you deepen the economy of these two countries, you in fact deepen the friendship. There is nothing to be gained 
the friendship with Bangladesh and India is written in blood of 71. Agreed. Nobody can take it away, nobody can give it. So let's start from that. Let's build on these positives. I agree with you 100% and yeah. on that note, let's take a quick break. Do tune in after the break. Thank you. Welcome back. Hi, sir. So, we were talking about Bangladesh and Bangladesh's foreign policy. And, of course, I think one of the things we need to talk about is the geopolitics of the world. We now live in a very different world from even five or ten years ago. It is a multipolar world. You have the rise of China. You have the rise of India. There is... Uh, there is uh, Russia, there's Iran, there's Saudi Arabia. These are all major players in the world. And of course, I think the most important change which has been wrought in world politics over the last couple of years has been the election of Donald Trump mm. as President of the United States and the impact that has on geopolitics of the world. How do you see that? I think uh, gradually a, a new sort of polarization is happening and I a new could world agree order more new world order is making that all these multipolarities yes. are taking place and uh, it is uh, supremely important that a country like Bangladesh, situated as it is, it's a member of SARC, it is a member of BIMSTEC, it is a bridge between Southeast and South Asia. We have Should a marvelous be very, very alert to what's happening. Uh, uh, it's, situation, it's a very yeah. fertile land. Uh, that you know what's going on. We have no business to get involved in all these things. But at the same time, our uh, we have a huge population, which is our strength which is we are a huge country, Absolutely. Uh, we have a heritage and we have to, got to see that uh, you know where all these uh, polarizations are taking place. That's right. I think the whole world now has to look and see how they relate to America and we used to live until very recently essentially in a, what was a unipolar world which I don't think was really that healthy for anyone and now that unipolarity seems to have split. Yes. But of course I think the, you know, the, big, uh, the big story in the future, and I think the big beneficiary of, uh, of, of Trump being the U.S. president would be, of course, China. And our big challenge is how to balance China in India. We have yeah. to make it absolutely clear that uh, we are a nation, and we are largely a nation because of the supreme sacrifice of our own people, That's of our right. own Mukti Juddhas, of the people who had invited, uh, who were united under the uh, valiant call of Bangabandhu. And tremendous help, magnificent help of India. Look at the thousands who had given their life of for course. our independence. So these are uh, ineffaceable uh, facts of history. At the same time, we want to move forward. We are grateful for the monumental uh, support that India, China has given us over the years mm -hmm. in our infrastructure. We Absolutely. need China. We need China they can for our it. development. And if the region develops, India develops, China develops. Do you suppose Bangladesh, and this is where I get back to the issue of Bangladesh being a big country, maybe Bangladesh in fact could play a, a constructive role in bringing India and China together. Why not? I think so. You know, I why can't so. we play a simple a role like that? I think so and I believe that had Bangladesh, uh, and uh, this was after all uh, a proposal as I understand, not being in government, I, uh, I, I'm not fully... Uh, you know, I do not know for, for a fact if this was the case, but from what I gather, uh, this was initially the proposal from the Bangladesh side. Had Bangladesh given uh, the, the, the deep sea port of Sonadia to China, yes, uh, it would have been of a great benefit to, to the country. And perhaps the Rohingya issues could have uh, would have been of a different dimension. But That's true you know, too. let's not look back in the past. And what it, it is, this what would it have is. Been, yes. uh, this would have been of a commercial uh, benefit. Yeah. Now India needs our port in Chittagong. If the port would have uh, been commissioned sooner, then nobody uh, builds uh, these sort of structures better and quicker than the Chinese. Indeed. This would have also been of benefit to India. It is yeah. how you package this thing. Right. And at the end of the day. Uh, economy is what matters and I think the Indians would have understood that. We yeah. cannot leave everything to a person called Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina to put across to India or to China. Mm. The others should also have 
they should they, they need to be they yes. need to be and this is where track forward. two is important that's right yeah. no that's right yeah. no absolutely but i mean i do think in general this as you said the role of bangladesh is changing you know i think the next decade is going to be really sort of a fascinating time mm. not just for bangladesh but for the world actually as we see many many uh, new things happening and let's switch up a little and talk a little about of course domestic issues we have elections around the corner i myself am very gratified to actually see the uh, dialogue which has been going on between the government and the opposition i think it shows maturity i mean i think it shows a certain level of um uh, you know, this is, you know, th I feel back in 2013 in the run up to the last election, there were no dialogue. The opposition had at that point spurned the path of dialogue and had decided to move to the path of confrontation. And I think we all saw where that ended up. That wasn't good for the Bangladeshi people. And at the end of the day, I think none of us were the winner for that. So I feel that this is a, this is a positive development. How do you feel? It has been a tremendously positive development. The uh, ruling party alliance, I think the 14 party alliance under the leadership of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina and the, uh, uh, the other alliance under Dr. Kamal Hussain mm -hmm. has been refreshingly different from the this other. This is what we want uh, to see in this politics. This is precisely what we want to see. And from day one, you see, when they had come out of the talks, uh, one, uh, given the uh, unfortunate experience uh, of the past, one had thought that they would come out and say, this is not, we reject this, you know, all that vitriolics, all this negative uh, verbiage yes. was totally missing and b from both sides. Yes, of uh, course. Uh, it is as if uh, I got the feeling because you see there was a phase when I worked for a Japanese bank and although I do not know the game very well, there is this <laughs> game called Go. Yes. I mean, it is uh, it is as though one was not trying to confront each other. Right. Uh, and uh, leaving aside the space from you know uh, for a, uh, quite a, quite a bit of space for each other and going around. That's uh, right. It's, it's a cooperative. Cooperative. Rather than uh, just confrontation. Uh, and even yes. today, when Mr. Fakhrul Islam Alamgir came. Remember that his leader, the former prime minister, is in prison without, you know, bringing forth that issue, foaming in the mouth, showing That's restraint. Right. Mr. Obaidul Kader, the energetic general secretary and taking a low key star, even the prime minister, such a radiant smile on her face as That's she right. talks. We also and you know, what must be going through her mind? Here is Uncle Kamal on the other side of the table. And, and the history, I mean, you can't be out of it. It's not Robert and Robert on the other side. Hmm. So much, if these histories come to me, it must be so much of it is passing through their mind. So it is very refreshingly there. And I'm not one of those cynics who will try to think, nor do I have a crystal ball in front of me. Think what will happen tomorrow? Tomorrow is tomorrow. Uh, like Umar Khayyam, I'll be happy with what I have in my hand. Today. That's right. Well, on that <laughs> note, let's take another commercial break. Uh, we'll be back after the break. So please do tune in after the break. I'm here with Mr. Abul, Has uh, Abul Hassan Chaudhry, and I hope you will be back. Thank you. Welcome back to Dhaka Tribune Presents Straight Talk. This is Zafar Subhan. I'm in conversation with Mr. Abul Hassan Chaudhry. Thank you for being back with us. So we've been talking foreign affairs. We've been talking politics. I mean, I feel that these are good days for Bangladesh. We are doing well yes. economically. Yes. There's uh, developmentally we're doing well. And I feel as though, you know, even politically, as we were just talking before, before the break, that, uh, you know, that there's you know, there, there's, uh, there's uh, light at the end of the tunnel. I feel that certainly when you compare the political situation today to where it was some years ago, the last term, I see much more cooperation. I see us moving in a positive direction. Do you see the same way? Well, to, to keep a growth rate at 7% is no joke. Is no joke. And to be able to sustain it, to have the stability. And uh, let's be very clear, uh, economically, the two alliances uh, do not have that much difference. They have True. had more than two meetings. They have had a number of uh, 
uh, public meetings, uh, we have not seen the economic programs very vastly different. <laughs> Not <laughs> even the Communist Party, which went up to talk to the Honorable Prime Minister, has made much of a difference in economic terms. So, there are many unities, there are, there are many uh, right. you know, commonalities between the alliances. Uh, these are the great strengths. Yes. So, I think inshallah in the next few months when we cross the hurdle, yes. there are many big things going to happen many investments going to come up to the country yes. and it is a question of with some degree of uh, serenity uh, and, uh, and with good governance, if the country can be taken forward then I think this uh, Bangladesh is going to go not only go forward, but going to go forward in an amazing speed. No, absolutely. I mean, I think if you look at opinion polls, that is certainly what most people think. You know, people may have this problem and that problem, but by and large, people think the country is moving in the right direction. By and large, people certainly think they are better off than they were five years ago, ten years ago. And of course, the economic numbers show this. Okay. And um, when we, as we move forward, and we see it as well, I mean, I think we are, I wouldn't say on the cusp, but we're fairly close to middle income status. Yes. And, uh, you know, when you think of the country we were back in 1972, yes. right after yes. we had uh, achieved independence, I mean, and this today. is an incredible achievement on our part, surely. Yes. And one thing that I have found directly from my experience, and uh, I often say, and on a serious note, that the best university that I went to was the 10 years when I went to a rural constituency. I bet, yes. I found that more than half the time, people were not interested to hear all these theories about, uh, they were interested to hear about, you know, how people got elected, what do we do, how we enact laws and all that. What is happening to the bridge? How does he get home? What is going to happen to the road? What is the, what about the school? How is his son going to, and the biggest number one demand that any member of parliament would face in those days and dare I say even now, how quickly can his son be sent abroad so that he can send money back home? Because that is one, if not sure number fire one, number way two. Of, of making. So. But of course, that is certainly the issue. But of course, more and more people are looking for jobs, jobs here yes, in also. Bangladesh. Yes. And of course, those jobs are being created to yes. a large extent. I mean, one of the amazing things in Bangladesh is that, you know, once upon, you know, no one in Bangladesh, you know, we have hunger, mm. we have poverty, it's mm. true, but no one starves to death. Mm. In Bangladesh, and you go to the villages, mm -hmm. it's an absolute night and day difference from a few decades yes. back. Yes. I mean, the, the, the way people are living, the confidence, the self belief, the self determination, it's a really a wonderful thing to say. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, if you go to a village today, and if you went to one about 10, 12, even 15 years ago, today in any village you will see fishery, duckery, hatchery, whole host of them. This was not there. That is So, right. people are generating income. Even 15 years ago, they would surround you and say, take my son or daughter, whatever you give, less, just a home for her. Today, that is the So, even at the rural level, there is an economy. And it is a question of how, only thing is that everybody even today is Dhaka bound. Mm. This has to stop. Right. The infrastructural development has to take place. I think I, I agree with you 100%. The divisions and the districts have to. That's this right. has to. If we decentralize, then that's the final. Regional developments have to take place. That's the final yes. piece of the puzzle. Yes. And I yes. think in, in a country of the size of Bangladesh, there is really no alternative. Exactly. And I think that is it. But what I do love to see is, as you said, the entrepreneurial spirit mm. of the Bangladeshi people, the indomitability of them. On that note, Mr. Abul Hassan Chaudhary, I will call it a day. It's been wonderful talking with you. Thank you so Absolutely much for your for time. Me. Thank you very much. I have really enjoyed much. this and uh, please, I hope you will join us again in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.